지금 다운로드 받으세요. Wins. Yeah, and, and then, then the best Rogue Rogue can do is tie him. So if Deer wins this game, he's in. Because because he wins the tiebreaker. Even if there becomes a tiebreaker. But they'd both be on two away wins, so... Deer has three away wins. He does? Yeah. Oh, he must have forgotten to write one down. Oh, oh, because he just won that last match. I yeah. forgot to write that down. Let me write that down. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. So this could be the last one of yeah. the night, guys. If Deer wins, we're done. We got our player. Rogue doesn't have a chance. And that's part of the reason why Rogue was looking back and saying, like, you know, I don't know. Am I really going to get back at this? He really was kind of out, you know. But... If Deer wins, that's oh. going to be it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Frost going to be the map. It's going to be a home map. It doesn't really matter anymore. All that matters is if Deer can win again. Yeah. Just needs the win. Beyond. He's like, it's kind of an interesting spot for Beyond because he wants to win as many games as possible. He's already in. Yeah. But it kind of rests on him, too. Like, if he doesn't do well, Deer takes the win, then Rogue is screwed. If he does really well and crushes Deer, yeah. then it comes down to the wire in that last game. Yeah, it would come down to Deer versus Rogue, right? Because if Rogue won, then Deer would be 4 and 6, so he wouldn't be able to get out. Yeah, and then that would make Deer yeah. or Rogue yeah, five. 5 wins, so there That's you right. go. That's right. Let's see it. Let's go into this game, guys, and see if Deer can pull it off up against Byung. We are on Frost at Cross Spawns, actually. Down on the bottom right in the red, it is Deer. Big deal for him right now. Doesn't want to go against Rogue for the spawn. Up Has the, two chances. Yeah. Top left is Byun, Terran player. You all know him. You all love him. He's a cool guy. He's already in. He's playing for the pride of it, I suppose. And also because he has to. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the rules. Yeah. He doesn't get to play in SSL if he doesn't play his games. So, cross spawns, and this is Deer's choice. What did... It's kind of interesting. What did Deer pick against other Terrans? Because he picked Ulrena against Jockji. Yep. Um, let me see, actually, in the first half what he picked against other Terrans. I want to see what he picked against the live. So against the live, he picked Dusk Towers. Yeah, so, he was kind of all over the place. Maybe he uh, wants to like just play different styles on these maps or something, or it could be something about his opponent's play as well. Like maybe he wants to be as far away from Fra uh, from Beyond as possible. Yeah, maybe because he drops so much. Yeah. Like, maybe yeah. he wanted the defensive qualities of Dusk Towers against the live, and he wanted to rush down Jockji. I, I don't know. It's, it's really deep say. thinking, you know. Or maybe he just wanted to hide certain builds for certain maps, too. Like, if he had a certain prepared build for each map, he just wanted to save one for each Terran and not show it against, you know, Alive first, and then Jock G knows for later if it's on the same map, like, oh, I got to be careful about this weird timing he did or stuff like that, you know? Yeah. But it's getting pretty deep. Kinda Either way, cool. we're, cool. we're on Frost. Yeah. All right, so it looks like it's going to be the the double medevac stim type of push here coming out of uh, Bion. Yeah, this has been uh, his Gumiho build, <laughs> where Gumiho just did the same build against Protoss every single game. Uh, he mixed it up slightly in one game and went for, like, Banshees or something, mm. but uh, pretty much the same thing. And Bion doing a similar idea here. Lots of the same, even against different races too. Did it against Zerg a bunch and against Pernas too. Will the offensive pylon? It's so far away. I don't. It doesn't seem too potent. Yeah, I know. I agree. I think it would be not a very good move here. In fact, he's not going to. Looks like he's going to scout with the Adept a little bit. Yeah. I mean, he, he's already seen this build out of Beyond he doesn't know that it is this build, but he can kind of be like, okay, there's a high chance that you're going to go for that. Again, you're going to have a lot of units early on, so mm -hmm. not going to try for that. Ooh, is this going to be DTs? Ooh, you know what? I think you're probably right about that. Can also hide gates up there, but uh, Dark Shrine looks appropriate. And that's kind of interesting. I wonder if he's seen something in the play of Bion, especially with this kind of build where you you drop this in really quickly, you're not really going to be trying to get an early eBay 
Yeah. I think this kind of build relies on some pressure early, and then it gets double eBay and transitions later. So he's going to be relying on scans, and also a lot of the units are going to be out of position. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, DTs, defensive DTs, are fantastic against drops. If you have one DT in the natural, one DT in the main base, and one DT defending against his double medevac drops, he absolutely will not be able to deal with all three. Yeah. Just can't do it. He's going to have to lift up from his attack on you Ooh. and save his home base. I spoke too soon. eBay coming down very early. And I don't think that anything tipped him off. I think he just is getting that now. Yeah. You so know? Bill just looks kind of normal, yeah. really, from uh, Deer, like scanning that. You can't really tell what's going on. That blink could be almost done for all he knows. Yeah. As long as it's researching when the scan is down. Oh, he sees the warp Whoa. prism coming in, though, and now he may get a little suspicious. It's a pretty big deal. He's going to have all of his Marines in position ready for this. Oh, man, if he catches the prism, that's a big deal as well, but I think he's going to warp in outside here. Yeah. He'll probably send one to the natural and pick one up. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way you do it. And here we go. No turn into the natural. He has saved up some energy, though. Which is yeah. pretty pretty important here. Has a turret on the way right now as well. Gonna have to cancel that out, unfortunately. Oh, the widow wow. line drop at the same time. Eight probes going down. No overcharge. He was focused on using his DTs here. Yeah, the widow line drop actually doing as much damage as the DT. Yeah, but at the same time, Deer is getting a third base, and Bion is not mining from his natural for yeah. a really long time. Also, the DTs have not died yet, so he's going to have to use scans here instead of mules. If he Super can even annoying. catch it, which he can't. Both of them survive. Yeah, and with that third base up, you definitely got to look at Deer and say he's going to be in a pretty nice spot here. More Metavax on the way, though, and don't forget that uh, Terran with this type of build is going to peek out in an army, like in the mid game, that's really strong and hard for Protoss to deal with. So, Bion is not out of this yet. Definitely can still knock Deer into that final qualification match against Rogue. Yeah. Definitely right there. I am liking Deer's position though. You know, very far away from the uncrossed map. He already has that third Nexus. He's beginning to get other techs and just add a bunch of gates. Even Immortals early on going to help out in the general army. He's controlling both watchtowers too, so he's going to take minimal damage from these drops. Overall, just a pretty nice spot for the Protoss. Mm-hmm. But Bion is out on the map. He's done some magical things with these medevacs, with his marine micro. That army is not that scary. He can definitely, you know, the force fields kind of add complications to it, but he can outmaneuver an army like that as well. There's not that many blank yeah. stalkers right now. You can see them just jousting for position. They don't even know exactly where each other are, and now they've been spotted. Here comes Bion. He's actually going to fight against this. I'm not sure if that's going to work out with yeah. that many sentries, the guardian shield, and you've only got marines. Solid defense going down. Tries to get in with the Widow Mine drop. It gets nailed immediately there. Great defense by Deer, and he's starting to pull ahead. Deer's turned something on. You know, he, he's really looking like a, a solid Protoss now in this last game. He, it's come down to the wire, and he's really performing. It's looking quite good for him so far. Blaves about to finish. Everything going very well for Deer. Yun, that's kind of like a funny place for a, a Liberator to be sitting. Yeah, and the rest of his army is out here on the map. And no scans. The DTs are doing a lot of damage, too. And he blinks behind the Liberator as well. And Bion is just getting torn apart here in the middle of the map. And he, now he's down 40 supply. I don't think he can come back from this. No, he barely this even is, has a third base. This is really tough. And he even has a Prism right there, perfectly timed out. I think that's just going to be it. Deer, Deer looks like he could be going up. Deer's going to advance. That's Rogue is looking on and crying tears because he's not making it in. He was relying on Bion, and Bion did not show up. No. Deer with a really cool build for the map. Really makes it work out. GG. All right. Deer is our third player going through. Two Terrans and a Protoss. Uh, well done today. Great, great passing, Valdez. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was It was a, a long day, but definitely a lot of fun. And you can see even Bion is, like, stunned in the booth. He's like, wow, I just got shrekt. Not yeah. not the most graceful way to, to exit your last game of the night, that's for sure. But I'm sure yeah. he's 
not that concerned considering he did get into the group already. So, yeah, it, it doesn't matter really what place he finishes in. He's he's six and three at the end. Alive ends up going seven and two. So yeah. the trend does continue forward. The uh, zero losses for TY, one loss for Classic, two losses for Alive. Tomorrow or next seven Thursday, three, three losses guess. for Maru or Zest. Yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. I think you're on to something here. Mm. And uh, I'd expect it to be Zest. We'll see what Maru can do. If he'll be okay to play those many games in that long of a period. Uh, you know, a, a good group tonight. It's unfortunate Jogchi had such a tough time, but Rogue and Impact were in it until the very last few games. Like two games ago, or one game ago even, Impact yeah. was still in it. And then Rogue was still in it till this game when Deer finally locked it up. So. Definitely a close nail-biting group. Yeah. Alive, though, kind of like, you know, just he's crushed everything. You know, he, he's the man of the entire group. He, he just crushes everyone, takes a couple losses here and there. He's like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm still out of the group. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it was, a, it was a good group, I think. Good games tonight. I yeah. definitely uh, had a fun time kind of really learning about this yeah. stim double medevac push a little bit more. Obviously, we see it a lot, but... Yeah. Uh, the fact that it was used in every matchup tonight is kind of cool. <laughs> no, really showing it off there is beyond. He came prepared, and as you said before, he's not on the team as of yet. So every single time he comes in here matters a huge amount yeah. to him compared I'm to other it. players. I'm calling it. You watch. He's going to be on Samsung. Yeah, he seems very friendly with Stork and Deer.